Run it. All right. So, Mr. Sonnet just embarrassed himself in front of the world. Oh, my God, it hurts. But Tito tapped. Tito tapped. Now, why on God's earth would John McCarthy come out and say, after missing the tap, I didn't hear the tap. Why would anybody do that? I don't know that I know how to respond to that. So here's the thing with it. We Can we set up what, what we're talking about, like please, the bite? We need the translation. What are we talking about? Everybody yeah. just saw knows that Chael just Joel, fought Tito so Ortiz. I, okay. I understood so the question. Can you translate Should the I? Joel for us, for us All right. the fans? And so here's what happened. I fought a bum named Tito Ortiz. I laid an egg. Tito won, which, which is embarrassing. But what had happened, during the fight, I thought that Tito had tapped. Now, I never said anything about this, uh, but I, I just thought he had tapped. And after the fight, there was a video going around of, of, of him doing this kind of motion. Now, in fairness to this, this is a tap, but there is other reasons you would do this with your hand. I can think back to a time that our friend Randy Couture fought Tito Ortiz, uh, had Tito in this precarious position where Tito's butt was, was facing up. Tito was going up. for a knee bar. He was inverted on the bottom against the cage, and your buddy decided to uh, spank him, spank spank him on ass. the butt. But again, he spanked him like this, and the exact definition of a tap is... This. So there is times where you would do this motion and not be tapping. At any rate, uh, that's what had happened in the fight. I thought Tito tapped. I for sure tapped. And uh, when the fight ended, there was a video of that. And I was going, yeah, I, I can't remember that in the match because he verbally said tap. And I, I let a position go. And when I let a position go, and then you get the conspiracy theorists online that, that see the motion right before I let go, they're going, oh, okay, this was a fixed fight. Tito and Chael had this worked out. And when Tito did this motion, Chael let go. And it's like, well, you're close. I didn't know anything about that. I was, I heard him tap, and I let go. So, uh, to your question, you had said that Big John weighed in on this, and I don't know if you were looking for a response from me or not. I was just telling the audience what happened in the story. So, what is do you, what is your question specifically? Why would Big John say that if he already missed the tap? Yeah, we, and you'd have to ask Big John that. I will, I will tell you guys this, and we've seen some people that we really like in this industry that are no longer in this industry. From uh, the great Burt Watson, uh, Stitch Duran is still in, in the business, but not, not in the same spot that he was in, uh, all the way up to an executive director in this state named Keith Kaiser. And one thing that does happen with, with some gentlemen is they want to be the star of the show. And that can get you in real trouble when you're talking about, because this is a television show as much as it is a sport. Right. And when the executive producers are looking to push very specific people in their very expensive time slots and other guys are trying to come in and get any level of notoriety, it's going to piss people off fast. And as far as your question with John, I, I, I love John and I respect John, but I don't know what that would help. For John to weigh in, I don't know what it would help. One, I don't know if he felt he needed to defend himself. And two, if there's a major fire burning for a rematch for me and Tito. Uh, sounds like a good reason to have a rematch, by the uh, way. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, You're going to say, Frank? Go ahead. Well, I was saying, though, I feel like none of us so far have, have hit the criteria of Joel's storytelling... Standard, you almost yes. choked me unconscious, though. Yeah, I mean, that was... But he yeah, didn't I, I, choke I you unconscious. I got he a story didn't. for you. Uh, yeah. It involves porn stars and, and cocaine. and. I like this. Go on. on. I like this. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm watching some fights. We're sitting there at the UFC. We're front row. And uh, I'm sitting there with the wife, Mrs. Mir. And it's going to be Tito Ortiz versus Forrest Griffin. It's usually the start of a good story, right? It's a good story if she said that. So, I'm going to try to tell it right. Well, if, uh, hold on a second. Mrs. Mir, would you like to come up here and correct me if I sound wrong? Jennifer. 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 All right, here comes Mrs. Jennifer. Mir. Jennifer. Yeah. This is uh, Frank's other half. A uh, big round of applause for Jennifer. You, you hear us talk about Jennifer all the time on uh, the Phone Booth Fighting Podcast. Sometimes okay. you hear it in the background. So um, Force and I are friends, training partners, work out together. He's fighting. And Tito at the time, I, I think Tito's great, you know, I mean, whatever. Uh, uh, we, we never had lunch together, but he's did a lot for the sport. Uh, I always thought that Dana, my, was my bitch, was kind of funny, you know. I laughed. I think he's a great marketer, uh, you know. So hey, you know, anybody who pushes the sport forward, we all benefit from. So uh, at the time, he um, 
for whatever fucking reason, uh, he decides to marry a porn star and have babies <laughs> with her. I'm all for banging a paint store. You know, hey, I mean, a blowjob. You know, hey, come on, guys. I mean, it's a porn star, you know. That's kind of cool, but. I'm with kinda, Tito on this. Right. <laughs> right. I'm with you on that part, too. You know, like, hey, it's like, a, it's like driving a Maserati. You know, it's cool, the rental car. You, you don't buy someone else's rental car, right? The, who would buy a rental car, right? Like, exactly. Like, I'm not going to buy the porn star. I mean, she's, she's had some miles on her. Some rubber's been burnt, you know. Well, I mean, <laughs> lack of rubbers. <laughs> And then not only do you marry a porn star, you marry the, uh, the most prolific one of our time, right? The busiest one. The busiest one, right? right. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, anyways, I'm not going to get you. So anyways, so uh, he's f- fighting for us, and she sits down next to us, and Tito has his buddy, is kind of hanging out with her, and they sit you down. To, yeah, you have to say, so it's you're sitting here, I'm sitting here, Tito's friend, and then Jenna and her right. you know, sidekick, and her, so, her friend. Her and friend. so they sit down, and right off the bat, like, we look over, and we're like, hey, you know. And so the buddy looks at me and goes, hey, you know. you know, I'm like, hey, you know, we're rooting for Forrest. You're rooting for, you know, uh, Tito. You know, hey, shit happens. We're fighting. It is what it is. We all understand the business. He goes, yeah. And the guy goes, hey, by the way, I'm a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm a big fan. So he already obviously knows who I am, and we've already established that since he's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, if this gets physical, he's fucked. Well, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So her and her friend kept going to the bathroom. Right, right. No, I was gonna get every to that. like ten minutes. So, then so I realized Jenna, this what is the was cocaine going part. on. They must have really had to pee. Yes. yes. Well, if anybody yeah. knows, if wait for the cocaine part. Well, this is the cocaine part. If we're all hanging out together and you tell me every fifteen minutes you got to go to the bathroom, you know, I'm assuming that you just don't have a small bladder syndrome. That we all realize, well, except for a straight edge here, uh, realize that you're you're doing lines of coke, you know. And so uh, she's coked out, and I worked for many years in a strip club, so you know, uh, it wasn't a uh, hard. I thing. snorted coke for many years. There you go. So between Joel and mine's expertise, I was around a lot of coked out whores. So I could peg one when I seen one, right? And so... Uh, so before it so started, I knew that there was going to be a problem. A so I issue. told the guy, hey, you know, basically may the best man win. Because I knew that they were going to be rooting for Tito and we were going to be rooting for Forrest. So the fight commences and uh, it's a close fight. Tito takes him down, Forrest is going through. So the fight's pretty close, right? Goes into the third round. And Tito completely shuts down. I don't know if you guys watch or remember this fight in particular. Yeah, so this was the last one, the last time they fought each other. In the third round, Tito throws zero punches, zero t- He's just sitting there for like five minutes. So it, it's kind of curious to me. So I'm sitting there, and I'm very much of a, an analyst at all times of martial arts. You that wasn't bad your- movement that you just did right there. Well, I wasn't think too if shattered. you would have... I think you would have I had to make that it against Mr. Richard. You would have choked him out. But I go on. <laughs> uh, so you said it under your breath. So I said it just kind of to myself. That I'm like, huh, I wonder if he's hurt. Like, did he break his hand or something? To myself. I'm talking to myself, watching a guy who is completely shut down. And I'm, I'm jail, you've done it, right? You, color, you, you call fights, commentary. You sit there, you talk. You're like, huh, I wonder why he's doing that. That's all I said. Like, why? So I said, I wonder if he broke his hand. You know, it makes sense. If you stop throwing punches, maybe you're hurt. Maybe there's something going on that we're not aware of, but I'm curious. I'm okay, just, this, this is where I have to take right. over after this. So the guy doesn't hear me, and so then Let he... Let Miss Jennifer uh, in. I have to take over so after asked me, this. Go ahead. Okay, so you said that. So Tito's friend, I'm innocently sitting like this, watching the fights, and... He says, oh, hey, Frank, what did you say? And you go, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's I didn't going answer, on. I didn't hear him. You guys, you were ta- you guys started no, no. talking about... When he about first asked me, that's why you had to answer him. Because he first goes, what did he say? And I was so encompassed in the fight. You're you going to lose this me. one, Frank. Yes. All right, right. And I, yes. And then I got you, and you guys started talking yeah, started about talking. it, right? Can I ask a question? Is this the, the blue belt who's doing the, what did you just say? Yeah, he did. He okay. Goes. As a fellow blue belt, let me just say, we know not to say anything. I'd be like, don't so no. He yeah. asked, he goes, hey, what did he say? So my wife goes, he thinks maybe he broke his hand. So then we, we're going to go have a start So the two of them started talking back and forth about it, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it still like pisses me off. All of a sudden... Jenna, who's sitting the porn star where Chael right. is, and the friend sitting here, she reaches across from behind yeah. the guy and shoves me and says, 
quit talking to my, can I say a bad word? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Quit talking to my fucking friend. That's my fucking friend. Who the fuck do you think you are? Quit talking. Leave him alone. 